Hello, my name is Dr. Alan Spiegel. I'm a neurologist practicing in Tampa Bay, Florida for the past 35 years, practicing hyperbaric medicine for the past 20 years. Over the course of these years, I've treated many different diagnoses and disorders, of which late effects of radiation therapy is one of them. Cancer therapy commonly includes radiation therapy as well as chemotherapy when appropriate. At times, radiation therapy, while doing a phenomenal job in killing the cancer, also has some side effects which unfortunately have to be treated. Let me explain to you how radiation therapy affects cancer. The value of radiation therapy is it reduces the blood supply of the cancer itself, thus killing the cancer. Wonderful. Unfortunately, however, the radiation is beamed through healthy tissue into the cancer and out the back end to get what they call the margins. So not only does the cancer get decreased blood perfusion, but the tissue before and behind, the healthy tissue, are not getting good blood supply. What happens at times is because of the poor circulation to the healthy tissue, there's development of either uh, uh, tissue necrosis or de deadening of some of the tissue, or poor circulation in that tissue, it makes it, we call it, not viable. This is where hyperbaric therapy works the best. Hyperbaric therapy causes new blood vessels to grow into any part of the body that's not getting good blood perfusion, thus the part before and behind the tissues that were radiated. It improves the immune system, it reduces swelling inflammation, which the radiation causes swelling inflammation, so it reduces that as well. And this means it will heal the area and therefore reduce long-term problems that will develop to those tissues. Patients who have had head and neck cancer frequently have radiation beamed into the jaw, into the neck, which causes the, the, the teeth to decay or die because of decreased blood perfusion, as I told you before, to the teeth. Therefore, the teeth have to be extracted. Now, if the teeth are extracted prior to hyperbaric oxygen therapy, there's a risk of something called soft tissue radiation necrosis, in which the gums could slough off the bone, leaving a raw bone waiting to heal. So in this case, what hyperbaric therapy does, according to Mark's protocol, which is, 10, which is 20 sessions prior to extraction and 10 sessions after, it causes new blood vessels to grow into the gums that were radiated to give a healing process so when the teeth are extracted, the gums heal over properly, and therefore your dentist can do the appropriate implants or, or uh, uh, other dentures that may be required. From a urology standpoint now, we see patients who have had radiation to the bladder or to the cervix, which causes decreased blood perfusion to the bladder or areas in that distribution. We've had patients in the past that had radiation to the bladder in which actually the wall of the bladder was so badly injured that there was need to do surgery unless we could heal that tissue. Hyperbaric therapy in that case caused new blood vessels to grow into the area of the bladder which reduced the swelling inflammation and therefore lay down the framework for healing. Now we have gentlemen who've had prostate cancer and among the methods of treating prostate cancer is radiation therapy. Unfortunately, with radiation therapy to the prostate, we have had breakdown of tissue in and around the prostate. We've had radiation uh, cystitis, which is radiation to the bladder as well. We've also had radiation proctitis, so radiation-induced injury to the, to the colon, which caused severe pain, as well as bleeding, etc. So if you've had if you know of someone who's had radiation to the uh, uh, genital urinary tract and they're having blood in the in the urine or with the passing of stools, there may very well be 
radiation necrosis to those tissues for which hyperbaric therapy will once again improve circulation and healing of the ulcers that are present. The next body distribution I want to discuss is the breast. Unfortunately, when you radiate the breast and then you do a mastectomy and then you want to reconstruct the area with an implant, that area that has been radiated does not uh, allow healing to be performed appropriately. Sometimes it can be an open wound that will never heal. Sometimes there'll be an opening and wound that will, that will be a problem in reconstruction itself. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is done prior to then after the implant is done, will enhance the outcome of the healing process with less risk of untreated wounds as well as infection. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is the best adjunct treatment you can receive if you complete your radiation therapy. If you or someone you know have post-radiation issues, give us a call and let us help.